Good morning. My name is Michael Doherty. I'm the district attorney for the 20th Judicial District, which is Boulder County. And I appreciate you coming out today for an update on the disappearance and murder of Rita Gutierrez Garcia. As district attorney, I stand here today along with the Longmont Police Department and the family of Rita, united in demanding justice for Rita and for her family and for this community, and to share with you a really positive development, a step that we're taking in the march forward for justice for Rita. Rita Gutierrez Garcia was a loving mom, daughter, and sister. And I'm joined out here today by her mom, Diane, and her sisters, Jessica and Nicole. And Rita's three sons are inside the district attorney's office right now. And as you might imagine, when we announced today that Juan Figueroa is being charged with kidnapping and murdering Rita, that it's a good day for the family in terms of these charges being announced and the step being taken, but obviously a really incredibly sad and difficult day. So Rita's sons are gonna remain inside the courthouse while we have this conversation with you and with the community. And if Diane and the family are up to it, they might be willing to answer some questions today. Let me highlight right at the start, we're here today for Rita. So we're announcing the indictment of Juan Figueroa for murder in the first degree and kidnapping. But we are here today for Rita Gutierrez Garcia. And it's because she was such a loving and wonderful mom, daughter, and sister that we're here. Because when she went missing, there was no doubt in her family's mind that it was against her will. They knew that the life Rita was living, the track Rita was on in terms of her own career, her education, but also as a loving mom, that she would never leave her family. She would never leave willingly. And it's because of the person Rita was and the great life she was living and the life that's been robbed by Juan Figueroa that we're here today. It's also because of her family and how incredible they are. And I can't tell you enough what an honor it is to fight for justice for Rita and for her family. They are an incredibly strong and courageous family. And for those of you that have been following this case from the beginning, which was back in March of 2018, you've heard from the family directly, you've seen them out in the community, you've seen them having the courage to go forward and talk in front of the media to try to generate help and leads, which have happened because of this family. And it's because of the family that we've here, we're here today. Also, the incredible trust that the family placed in the Longmont Police Department. And I'm really pleased today to be joined by the lead detectives as well as Deputy Chief Jeff Satter. The family put the trust in the Longmont Police Department and worked really closely with the detectives and the command staff at the Longmont Police Department over the years since Rita disappeared to make sure that all of us were united in doing everything we could for Rita and for her kids. And I want to especially, uh, especially recognize Detective Cody Clark, who from the early days of this investigation was absolutely determined to bring Rita's killer to justice. And it's because of Detective Clark and his outstanding work on this case that we're here today. This is a great example, yet another prime example of outstanding work by law enforcement in this jurisdiction. Because Detective Clark and his colleagues, Deputy Chief Satter, and all the leadership of Longmont Police Department were united from the very beginning in recognizing that Rita Gutierrez Garcia did not go missing of her own free will, but rather that she'd been abducted. And as the days and weeks passed and the search for Rita did not produce the results that we hoped for, we realized and concluded that she's presumed deceased. I also want to acknowledge the prosecution team and it's definitely been a team effort, including prosecutors, inve investigators, and victim advocates. The prosecution team's been led by First Assistant District Attorney Katarina Booth and Deputy District Attorney Michelle Sedano. It's because of their commitment to this case and the work they've put into it. And when I say tireless efforts, I really mean it, to bring her killer to justice. As you know, an indictment has now been filed. It's been shared with the community and with the media. It's a public document, and it explains the charges and the basis for the charges. The three charges filed against Juan Figueroa are murder in the first degree under the theory that he acted with intent and after deliberation, 
and then murder in the first degree, and that his actions in committing another felony, that kidnapping that he's charged with, resulted in the death of Rita Gutierrez Garcia. Both of those counts are murder in the first degree. The maximum sentence in the state of Colorado is life without the possibility of parole. As you will recall, Mr. Figueroa is currently incarcerated in the Department of Corrections for a sexual assault case that our office prosecuted and for which he was convicted, and he remains within the Department of Corrections. I have to, of course, emphasize that he is innocent unless and until proven guilty of these charges, that these charges are merely allegations, and he's cloaked in the presumption of innocence from now through the end of the case. But I can promise you that we are going to work incredibly hard, as we have since March of 2018, to make sure that he's held fully responsible and fully accountable for the murder of Rita Gutierrez Garcia. The indictment and the summary that's already been provided to you contains some of the factual allegations, information and evidence that was presented to the grand jury. So I do want to just take a moment to thank the grand jurors. As you might imagine, during the pandemic, we did not have a grand jury meeting here at the courthouse. The grand jury was impaneled on April 6th of this year and has been working hard on this case since that date. So the grand jury was impaneled and they've been hearing evidence and testimony. That evidence and testimony has been particularly important in us taking this positive step forward today in seeking justice for Rita. As you may know, the grand jury has a number of uh, responsibilities and also the authority to issue subpoenas that require individuals to testify. Whether or not they want to cooperate with law enforcement, whether or not they want to meet with the district attorney, when the grand jury issues a subpoena, that requires the person to appear in front of the grand jury and answer questions. And I'll simply say for today's purposes that that process that the grand jury utilized and the time, effort, and the tension that the grand jury put in the case and bringing witnesses before the grand jury who might otherwise be unwilling to cooperate has helped us advance the case forward to this stage. In any case where the victim's body has not been recovered, it is obviously a difficult prosecution. We have to show that the individual, in this case Rita, that she was murdered, that she didn't disappear of her own free will. And certainly we have no doubt about that. We also have to, absent a crime scene and absent the evidence that might be left at a crime scene, build a case that enables us to hold the individual responsible for her murder Juan Figueroa, completely responsible and accountable for his actions. And as the summary in the probable cause section of the indictment indicates, the Longmont Police Department and the District Attorney's Office conducted an exhaustive investigation, including an examination of cell phone data, video recordings, financial data, social media, DNA analysis, and also the use of a court-authorized wiretap inside a correctional facility to capture some of the statements being made by Mr. Figueroa. It's been a tremendous amount of work going into this case, which is the absolute right thing to do. This world lost a wonderful person, a loving mom, a great daughter and sister. On behalf of the Longmont Police Department and the District Attorney's Office, and if I may, on behalf of the family, today is a positive step forward. But it is indeed a very sad day for the family. Because in charging this man with Rita's murder, it's just another message to them that Rita's not coming back. So whether or not Rita's mom is prepared to talk, well, we'll check in with her in a couple minutes. But first, I'm going to ask Deputy Chief Jeff Satter of the Longmont Police Department to come up and say a few words on behalf of the Longmont Police Department. Hello, I'm uh, Jeff Satter. I'm a deputy chief with the Longmont Police Department. And uh, I just want to say we are very thankful to be here today. And the work done by our team and the partnerships with the district attorney doesn't happen by accident. These cases are incredibly difficult and our detectives and our staff were tenacious they followed all the leads and they worked hard. And I think as this case moves forward, you will see how hard they have worked. But we are honored to be here today 
to bring you this information and recognize that we're doing it for Rita and her family. And we're gonna continue to do anything we can to bring this case to a successful conclusion. And we are so fortunate to have a great prosecution team that we work with regularly. And uh, all of Boulder County, City of Longmont, they should be thankful for the teamwork in this whole county because it takes a lot of teamwork to bring these cases to this point. And uh, we are thankful for everybody that helped. And last thing I wanna add is it's been a little more than three years and the family has been gracious. They have stood by us. And they trusted us. And that means a lot to be here today. So thank you. I would just uh, like to say again thank you to Longmont Police Department, to our district attorney. Mike, the media, because you have been here from the start also, um, you have let us speak, you have shared moments about Rita with us. Um, so I just like to thank everyone. Thank you. This is, of course, the first step in the prosecution of Juan Figueroa for the murder of Rita Gutierrez Garcia. I want to emphasize he's innocent unless and until proven guilty and the charges are merely allegations. On behalf of the family, I want to let the media know that they're not going to be giving any one-on-one -on -one interviews after today. That's why the family wanted to be here for this press conference so that we can have them uh, speak to the extent that they wanted to. But Diane's asked me to convey that. Uh, she's not going to be giving any one-on-one -on -one interviews. The family's not going to be agreeing to do that. So if you could join me in respecting their privacy. But I also want to join her in thanking you. Because quite frankly, uh, I just really value the role of the media in every case and how you keep the community informed. But it's because of the work that you did in talking about this case and meeting with the family that we generated a lot of investigative leads. So I want to join Diane in thanking you. And I really appreciate Diane highlighting that. So I'm happy to take a few brief questions if you have any at all before we get back inside. Mr. Dorney? Yes, sir. I, I understand the, the investigative process and wiretaps, and they don't just happen overnight. But if you could, for viewers that have been following this story, just explain why it took so long to put this all together. Sure. So the question is, why did it take so long for us to come here today? And I think that's a good question, and I appreciate your asking it. So first, the fact that Rita's body has not been recovered is a significant issue that we had to deal with in the course of the investigation. A tremendous amount of work went into confirming that Rita was not in fact alive. From day one, we had every reason to believe that she disappeared against her will. I want to really stress that. That was our belief from the very beginning. But in court, we have to prove that that's in fact what happened. So by checking bank accounts, social media, everyone and anyone connected to her in her life, and Longmont Police Department did an incredible job with this investigation. So the fact that it's a no-body homicide was the first reason that it took some time to get here today. Second is, this, where we are today is very much a journey that we planned to take two years ago. Meaning Juan Figueroa was prosecuted by this office and convicted by a trial jury here in Boulder County for a sex assault. We talked about the prosecution of that case as a step to today and what it would mean. And then flowing from that, the court authorized wiretap. And you're right, the wiretaps do take a long time to put together. And every minute that was spent on it was absolutely the right thing to do. And then getting the permission of the court, the judge, to put that wiretap in place and to take the evidence gleaned from that wiretap and put it before the grand jury leading to this indictment that we have before you today. The other thing I would highlight that I mentioned earlier as part of the timeline is we did not have a grand jury actively working during the pandemic. The criminal justice system, as you know, like many other sectors of life, was impacted by the pandemic. We did not have grand jurors coming into the courthouse. 
So as we begin to exit the pandemic, we impaneled the grand jury, a new grand jury, on April 6th of this year. And since then, the one case they've been working on is the disappearance and murder of Rita Gutierrez Garcia. And I'm really grateful to the grand jurors for coming down to the courthouse. They come down, they wear masks. They come down usually in the evenings after they finish work. We meet with them here in the courthouse. They maintain distance and sit all apart the courtroom. And they give their every attention to this case. And it's because of them we're here. But the pandemic certainly had an impact on the timeline as well. Thanks. I wonder, would Diane be able to just answer a question, just how you're, you feel about today and how the family is doing? If you want, sure. We are grateful for this day. It is a, a joyous day. Um, I've been praying for this day, so God has given this to me. And, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's heartbreaking because uh, I still don't have my daughter. But there's still a lot. There's still a road to be traveled, and, and we'll get there, and uh, we'll get the justice that we've been wanting. And I'm still praying, and I know the Longmont police and everyone else has not given up on the fact that uh, my daughter will be found. Thank you. I feel comfortable just sharing a little bit about what it's like going through all of this, not knowing or not knowing where she is. It's been a hard road. Um, we've all done our best to be strong, but it's been a hard road. And I know it's not going to be easy till it's all over. Is there, is, is there increased likelihood that she'll be found now that formal charges have been filed? Um, yeah. It's our continuing hope and a goal we will maintain of finding Rita and bringing her home to her family. So that remains very much a focus of ours. I think Deputy Chief Jeff Satter could talk about the fact that Longmont will keep the reward in place if we're able to ascertain information as to the location of Rita's body, and he can answer any questions about that if you have any. But yes, it's very much a focus for us, and it's my hope that we are able to do that. Do you know when he'll likely first appear in court here? That's a good question, Mitchell. When will he first appear in court? I don't know the answer to that because he's currently in the Department of Corrections, and due to some of the restrictions on transfers between the Department of Corrections and the county jail due to the pandemic, I'm not quite sure what timeline we'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll certainly let you know in advance of his first court appearance. Can you explain a little bit more about how that first sexual assault case was a stepping stone to, to this, these charges? So uh, I appreciate your question. The sexual assault case involved a woman whose initials are K.N. She had come forward separate and apart from this investigation. That was a very thorough investigation, also conducted by the Longmont Police Department and prosecuted by this district attorney's office. Katarina Booth, who's the first assistant district attorney, was the lead prosecutor on that sex assault case. He was tried on that case independent of any of the evidence regarding Rita's disappearance and murder. And based on the evidence of his sexual assault of K.N., he was found guilty and sentenced to 93 years to life uh, in state prison. So he's in the Department of Corrections currently, but certainly during the pendency of that sexual assault prosecution, we we're talking about the impact of the prosecution on this case and what evidence we would hope to gather with regards to this case after that prosecution was completed if the jury reached the verdict that they did, which was that he was guilty of that sex assault. Uh, and I really just want to thank First Assistant DA Katarina Booth, who has been on both of these cases from the very beginning. She's an amazing prosecutor, really an incredible prosecutor and public servant, and it's because of her that we're here today. So both on the sex assault case and on this case, she had an unerring commitment to make sure that justice was done for each of these two victims. And with Michelle Sedano on this case going forward, I feel very confident in the prosecution team we have and grateful for their efforts, as well as the outstanding work by Detective Cody Clark, his colleagues, and the leadership at the Longmont Police Department. I think our time is... Okay. So I'm going to turn it back over to Deputy Chief Satter for a minute and then take one or two more questions before we wrap up. Thank you.
and I don't have much to add. Uh, we do still have a reward for information. Uh, we have not had to use that reward to get to where we're at today. But we want to find Rita. So if there's somebody with information that can help, uh, we would be very interested in speaking with them about that. Uh, you can call the Longmont Police Department at 303-651-8501 and ask to be transferred to Detective Cody Clark as uh, DA Doherty has said, has done tremendous work and we will follow all leads. But we do still have a reward and our goal is finding Rita. What is the reward? It's $10,000, up to $10,000. How many leads did you guys track down? You know, I don't have that information. I'd have to check with Cody, but I know it was a lot of leads. They, they have been tirelessly working since day one on this case and and it just never stopped so there's a lot of things to run down what's it like jeff kind of knowing who the suspect is knowing what you know ahead of time but not being able to make a move like you're doing today for a couple three years yeah and that's that's where our partnership with the da's office is great because we met regularly. I know Cody spoke with them all the time and we're sharing information and that was a constant push is to get this case to where uh, we can prosecute the individual that, that we believe did this crime. And uh, the evidence took us there and a lot, a lot of work from Detective Clark got us to this point and the prosecution team. This is not an easy investigation. This is very difficult, and they did tremendous work. Thank you. It was our commitment and promise to Rita's family from the very start that we would not let this case go cold. There are roughly 1,700 cold case homicides that remain unsolved in the state of Colorado. And from the very first day, we were absolutely committed to ensuring that Rita's name would not end up on that list. So we are honored to be here today and to stand united with the Longmont Police Department and Rita's family in taking this step forward towards justice for Rita. Before we break, I understand that Rita's sister, Jessica, would like to briefly address the media as well. I just wanted to, to take this moment to thank with all of my heart Detective Cody Clark for your relentless work and dedication to my sister and our family for always answering our questions for staying in touch and same with Katerina Sergeant Todd you guys have been I never doubted you guys I never doubted you and I always knew that we would reach our moment of victory and I know this is just the beginning but we're on our way and I just want everybody to not forget Rita, remember her more than anything, and not as a victim, but she'll be victorious. She's not going to be a victim. She's going to win still. We're going to win. And that's all I wanted to say. That concludes our press conference today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out today. I want to say thank you to the family yeah, too. I know it's not hard. I know it's not easy being here on a situation like this with all these cameras, but thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Well, thank you again for being here. And like I said, you've been here from the start. You shared many moments of Rita with us. So yeah, we really appreciate you also. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. your strength. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.